You are now listening to the Flurry Podcast, hosted by Marquise Rawls. There's no part one to the podcast. I'm just going to be talking about these topics, and I'm going to get straight into the first one. But Terrence Crawford has a possible mega fight at 140. First thing that has to happen, though, is Josh Taylor and Jose Ramirez. They have to first fight each other to figure out who's better and become a undisputed champion but when you do that you got to see bud crawford yes crawford he's been getting on social media he's been making them twitter fingers go and his twitter fingers are just as fast as his hands in the ring and him and jose ramirez they've been you know having a slight little back and forth and crawford told him yeah i'm gonna see you once you handle business at 140 i'm gonna come see you and that would be a fight i will be 100 percent down for but Ramirez has to first get past Josh Taylor. And to be honest, I think Josh Taylor might actually beat him. Jose Ramirez, he's really good. He's great, actually. But I think Taylor is just a tiny little smidgen notch above him. Tiny little smidgen notch above him. And the thing that's going to put him over the top is if he learns from his war with Regis Progre. If he learned just one new thing or just one thing how to... Switch it up a little bit. He would unanimously beat Jose Ramirez. And then you got to come see Terrence Crawford. Then that's where it's a whole different ball game. You're not playing just boxing no more. You you fighting for your life. Once you get in that ring with Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford, he's a mean guy. He come in there. It almost feels like Terrence Crawford. He really wants to like punch your skull through the back of your head every time he throws. That's how mean this guy is. And don't even get me started on his skill set. It's through the roof. He's as skilled as I've ever seen in boxing history. Yes, as I've ever seen. And I don't know if Josh Taylor could do it. I don't know if Ramirez could do it. Now, maybe if they could like both get in the ring and jump Terrence Crawford, then, you know, they might have a chance. But even then, I don't even know if they could do it then. If both of them get in the ring, I might still put my money on on Terrence Crawford. (laughs) We just got to see what happens. But I definitely would love to see Terrence Crawford fight either one of them. Whoever becomes the undisputed champion, you got to fight Terrence Crawford. Will it happen at, at 140 or 147? I guess that's for them to decide. Because Terrence Crawford, he's been at 147 for like a couple years now he's been there. But I would still think he has no problem going back down to 140 and making weight there and feeling comfortable there. He's been at 140 for years, and he's only been at 147 for a couple years. So I I think it would, you know, just be like muscle memory to him to go back down to 140 and make the weight there, you know, get used to the training there and everything. It should, it should be all fine. Whereas if one of them comes up to 147, they might have to, you know, make slight adjustments to, you know, moving around and fighting. With the few extra pounds on them. I don't want that to happen. I want both of them to be tip top shape. I want both opponents to be at your peak. I don't want no excuses. I don't want no excuse saying. Hey Terrence Crawford beat me because you know. Them seven extra pounds made me slow. And nah. I don't want no excuses like that. I don't want nothing. If the fight needs to happen at 140. For everyone to be at their peak. Then make it at 140. No excuses. And don't make me wait for it neither. Next news. Virgil Ortiz. He headlined. uh, The Zone's first comeback event. It actually happened already. And I did not see it. I literally just forgot about it honestly. (laughs) But I'm going to go back and watch it. Because I like Virgil Ortiz. I really do. I believe he's on Golden Boy. And I feel like he hasn't been getting enough. Like promotions and spotlight. Like these other younger prospects at 135. And don't get me wrong. These fighters at 135, they're really good. They really are. But Virgil Ortiz, he's up there. He's right up there with them. And the only reason why I think he's not getting that sort of praise is because at 135, you got Tank Davis and Devin Haney and uh, Teofimo Lopez and Ryan Garcia where you can see they're all great fighters. And they all have the opportunity to fight each other. Or at least get a big name. Teofimo Lopez, he's fighting Lomachenko. 
they're talking about Ryan Garcia and Luke Campbell, which most likely is not going to happen. Or even Ryan Garcia and uh, Jorge Linares, which once again is not going to happen. But there was at least talks about it. Virgil Ortiz, he's at 147. He's not going to get no Keith Thurman in the next couple years. He's not going to get no Earl Spencer, no Terrence Crawford. He's not even going to get a Mikey Garcia or a Danny Garcia in like the next year or so. So he, it's a little tougher for him to to build his name up in the 147 division because there is the names in that division are too big for him to to get so quick. Whereas 135, they have some big names too, but they wasn't they're not as big as uh, Earl Spence or. Uh, Mikey Garcia or Keith Thurman or Sean Porter like that. They're not that caliber of big names. They're great fighters, but they're not superstars like there is at 147. There's stars in 147, multiple with an S at the end, stars. And I feel like he needs to be pushed more because he he needs a big fight, and I think he's ready for it. Out of the top people at 147, the upper echelon, the elites, who can Virgil Ortiz possibly beat or at least have a great fight against. I think him and um, I want to say him and Danny Garcia. That'd be a really good fight. But Danny Garcia, he's fighting Earl Spence, and Danny Garcia, he also has something about him with his power. Cause when he fights, when he fought Sean Porter and he fought Keith Thurman, when you fight the elite fighters, you can't really knock him out. But when it comes to the mid tier guys or the people who are like borderline elite. Danny Garcia, he just he comes out of nowhere with these these one two punch knockouts where it's just like where did he where he get this power from? And I know he's a strong guy, but when it comes to the mid tier fighters, he just that one or two punch, it's like where where's his power coming from? And that would be a good fight between Danny Garcia and Virgil Ortiz, but somehow, some way Danny Garcia might find a way to knock him out. Sorry to say, Virgil Ortiz. Him and Sean Porter would be a woo, that might be a classic. That that would be a classic between the up and coming prospect and Virgil Ortiz and the vet Sean Porter. And Sean Porter will use every trick in the book to beat him. And Sean Porter will win. Those two fights is the one that he actually has the best chance of winning because I think Keith Thurman is well. But if if he comes back at hundred percent. Uh, he's a little too technically skilled for Ortiz. Errol Spence is Errol Spence, and Terrence Crawford is Terrence Crawford. No need to explain those fights. But he does need like more promotion behind him. Uh, another good fight that was coming on in his top rank bubbles. I've been catching up on all of them. I'm not all the way caught up, but I will be soon. I will be soon. But I saw the Michaela Mayer versus... Helen Joseph, where Mayers got the unanimous victory, and she's just too quick, too accurate, and has great timing, and her natural ability to box mid-range and on the inside, it was just really good, honestly. I've seen her fight a couple times before, you know, I'm not really up to date or aware of her resume, but I've seen her fight a couple times, and she's as good as any boxer that I've seen now like she's and I, I, I kind of don't want to say she's as good as a man because that's sort of implying that men are naturally better which I don't think they are but she could probably knock some of these guys out I'm not even gonna front yo Mikey Garcia you you get this work from her you can yo Keith Thurman you you and your fragile body she might you know, break your ribs or something, cause she's she's really good, and I don't know if her and Clarissa Shields are in the same um, weight class. I, I don't think they are, but if they was the fight, classic, classic. And the last topic is top rank, the company, the head being Bob Arum. You all know him, you all love him, but don't forget top rank. It's been up for sale. Oh, you thought I forgot about it? No, 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 no. When all these sports teams and companies go up for sale, I don't forget about it. And like I said before, we should get 300 million people in America 
or even all over the world, 300 million people. If we all chip in $10, we could buy top rank and all own like a 0.0001% of it. And we'll just have, you know, residual income for the rest of our lives. A good like $17 a year. You don't want that $17 untaxed? Come on. Come on. It's your money working for you. It's pretty simple. It's $10. I got my $10 ready. Matter of fact, I got $20 to cover me and one other person. That's how dedicated I am. I got 20 because 10 for me and 10 to cover another person. That's how dedicated I am to this plan. We failed on the plan when uh, the Houston Rockets, when they went up for sale, we failed. I tried to get the 300 million people to chip in the $10 and I couldn't get it. I missed it by a little bit. I only needed 200. 99,999,997. I was so close. And I missed it. And then some other basketball teams went up for sale. And then uh, some other football teams went up for sale. And I tried again and again and again and again and again to get the 300 million people. And I was never able to do it. But this time, I'm dedicated to doing it. So I'm starting the movement. The movement that's called Buy Top Rank. I'm going to make a hashtag for it, right? It's going to be called 300M by Top Rank. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start it. If you are in with me, use the hashtag, spread the word, share it with everyone, and make sure everyone has their $10 ready. And if you don't have your $10, someone else has to put up $20 for them and another 10 for someone else. Okay, it's not that hard. It's simple. That's how it's going to be. That's all for the podcast. I'm done. You were just listening to the Flurry Podcast hosted by Marquise Rawls. Stay tuned for the next episode or go back and listen to the previous episodes if you haven't done so.